Hello and welcome to the Internet of Things Made Simple. I'm Larry Boyhumer. This is a special mini episode, and I thank you for joining us. As always, I ask two things. Please take a look at our new webpage, the Internet of Things Made Simple dot com, as it has some phenomenal material on IoT, if I do say so myself. I also ask you to hit the little subscribe button on the podcast service you're listening to, so that way you can have our podcast delivered automatically. In this special mini podcast, we're going to look at IoT and how its growth is going to be affected by different technologies. A lot of people are thinking that 5G is going to power the new wave of IoT, but I believe it's actually going to be CAD-M and eventually NB-IoT that will fuel its growth. 5G is definitely a catchword nowadays. It first started out that you'd only see it on very nerdy web pages, and then you started seeing it move into web pages like CNET and other ones, and now you're seeing 5G articles in major publications like New York Times, CNN, Fox News, those kind of things. It's not like IoT hasn't had a huge growth already, though. Billions of devices, especially if you include the Wi Fi and Bluetooth enabled ones, are considered smart today. And that ranges from health to wearables to industrial monitoring devices, police cars, and many more. Even without the introduction of these three new networks, IoT was already on the rise. And that's being powered by a few different technologies and networks today. Municipalities, for instance, are using LoRa, and we've spoken about this in the past, and that includes the city of Calgary, where I live. Bit of a shout out to them for having the technology thinking to be able to move into LoRa. In addition, in many parts of the world, many companies are deploying Sigfox-based solutions. Not so much in North America yet. We've talked about that as well. Coverage isn't quite there. For those who need a bit more speed than, say, a 2G network, Cat1 is proving to be a very popular choice. And that's because Cat1 gives just enough speed to be able to use it for many different applications. And then for those who kind of needed that speed, 4G was always a great option. 5G will have some impact on IoT, but it's going to be very limited, and we'll explain why in a bit. And that's because the only people that will really benefit from it tend to be those who need much more real-time applications, and that's not really what a lot of IoT is today. As well, the extra cost of the modules, as well as battery consumption, might limit its appeal. And that means that CAD-M will be the first start to what's called the hockey stick curve of growth for IoT. Networks are rolling out as we speak. Information's kind of spotty. Some carriers mention they have their entire footprint done, but maybe perhaps they don't have all the in-building systems. Other ones are still rolling out CAD-M. It's not going to take long, though. By the end of Q1 next year, you'll pretty much have CAD-M coverage wherever you have cell coverage today. This network, and I've talked about it a little bit on the episode that we did about choosing technologies, but let me go into it again on why CAD-M is going to do quite well for IoT. It allows for speeds that are just enough for many applications to be able to transmit more than bits and bytes. No, you're not going to browse YouTube on it, and no, you're not going to want to use it for any kind of web browsing. But it's enough if you have to upload some kind of a file, say at 2 o'clock in the morning. I do warn you, and I don't know too much about this, I'm still learning about it, but there might be some issues when it comes to firmware updates on CAD-M devices and how much data they might use. So if you are deploying CAD-M, make sure you check into that beforehand. You can check with Novatech or any other company you buy modules from. The next part is low battery consumption. And if you're plugging a CAD-M module into a device like a car, it doesn't really matter so much if the device is all that power conscious because many things on the car are going to use way more power than the module. However, if you're doing tracking and the solution is based on a battery power, or if you're doing a solar power based solution, every little bit you can take out of the power usage helps your application. It means you can use a smaller battery or perhaps the device will last longer in a single charge. CAD-M definitely takes that one step further. It does offer some support for voice, but it's limited. It tends to be one way. So I would definitely recommend you looking into that before you would consider deploying CAD-M for a voice-based solution. From what I've seen, it tends to get into buildings very well. The reason why that's important 
is that if all your deployments are outside, then you probably will have good coverage in most areas. That's not the case when you go inside of buildings. And we could talk a little later on in a future podcast about how lower frequencies can get through buildings a much better. But just know that CATM is much better if you're deploying it into things like parking garages or basements. Where I see CATM standing out is in a few areas. The first is the next generation of wearables will definitely be on CATM unless you had some kind of a requirement for high speed. And I don't think that someone's going to sit there and watch YouTube on their watch anytime soon. It's mostly about transmitting basic information up and perhaps bringing down things like emails, text, you know, news updates. And CATM is more than good enough for that. Along the same lines will be mobile tracking devices. And we're going to talk a little later on in a future mini episode about how CATM is going to power what I call the previously untrackable. So stay tuned for that episode. For now, CATM will be the best technology for remote monitoring devices. We're going to talk about MBIOT or NB1 or CATM2. It goes by a bunch of different names. And when I get into that technology, you're going to see that it will probably become the preferred network for monitoring devices. But for now, CAT M1 is the network of choice. And then the last area is sensor based monitoring. Again, NB1 or M2 will definitely replace that when it's out. I think you'll start to see CAT M1 or CAT M replace Wi Fi in some devices. Maybe not right off the bat, because I'm not sure the rate plans are going to be there and the coverage is going to be there. But as you start to see these things develop, you're going to see that companies are going to decide. Why am I putting Wi-Fi in, hoping my end customer decides to activate it? Why don't I take control of that myself? My personal belief, though, is that MBIoT, again, as I mentioned, also called NB1 or CAT M2, will be the eventual winner in terms of the amount of devices deployed. And it will truly make that hockey stick curve happen. I jokingly say that because I've been in IoT for 20 years and we've always said, this is the year of the hockey stick curve growth. So maybe it finally will happen before I die. I do think that MBIoT will be very disruptive for a few reasons. One is the power usage. I talked about that in the area on CAD M. It takes it one step further. So any device being deployed will get much more battery life. You know, I've heard 5, 8, 10, 15 years on a single battery, which is amazing. Its cost, not only for the hardware, but for the ongoing airtime, will definitely displace Wi-Fi in many applications. Without going too nerdy here, it's a much more difficult installation for the carriers because it, CAT-M was just simply an upgrade. MB-IoT requires its own implementation, and I'm going to have a future podcast on the nerdy stuff, so just know that it's a harder install for the carriers. But the reason why that's good once they make that move, though, is that it's going to offer better ability to offer what's referred to as quality of service. For those of you who aren't nerdy, think of this as the express line at the airport for people that are flying first class so they get to get ahead of everybody else. Networks have always dreamed about offering quality of service for different applications. It's now going to be much easier to do on MB. The last thing is that it's, again, I don't want to get too nerdy. It's going to allow for direct connection to a sensor to the network. Right now, the sensor has to go back to a gateway. And depending on how many sensors you're deploying, it might not make sense to put a sensor-based solution. When the network can talk directly to the sensor itself, now the cost of deploying drops dramatically. And that, again, will even further spike it up. So all these technologies are going to compete because, again, 4G is not going away. 5G is going to be there. LoRa is definitely not going away. Sigfox is not going away. What this does is that even though there's a lot of growth going on, it's still going to force a lot of competition among the companies, which is always great for consumers. And I believe it's actually going to force Wi-Fi to improve, to become even more stable. And that's going to bring more introduction of new technologies into Wi-Fi, which is great. I don't want to make it sound before I go that 5G is going to be a flop. It's going to start its incredible domination of the smartphone market probably in 2019. And I have another podcast, which I'll plug coming up, which says that you should not buy a smartphone in 2019 that's based on 5G. And I explain a lot more in that podcast. So be sure to tune in for that. 
It is going to make its way into cars, especially those that work on self-driving. And that also includes buses and trains and other technologies like that. Its biggest growth in 2019, in addition to smartphones, might be the home DSL replacement market. I know Verizon has already launched some services. It's not quite 5G, it's on its own band, but you're going to see that where they're going to even cannibalize their own landline customers. It just might not be the ideal technology for IoT. Early in 2019, CAD-M is going to be a very popular topic for our podcast. Things like some of the new markets that it will definitely thrive in, how MBIoT is going to disrupt Wi-Fi further, and about how both of these technologies are creating strong business cases to use cellular that it never made sense before. I hope you enjoyed this mini podcast. I look forward to having you listen to future mini podcasts, as well as our regular podcasts that happen every Thursday. I'm Larry Bohumer. Thanks again for listening. Take care. Music